Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Mendoza. Here. Council Member Best. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. Mayor Croft. Here. Thank you. Tonight we reach an open study session. Staff is going to present some programs that decisions to press these programs on and not the ones that are holding the vote our staff needs some decisions on that which we can give and what they want to be given and what they are uh, I'll read the item and then we'll go on and have staff presentation number two consideration discussion regarding capital projects for fiscal year 2019-2020 Mr. Dutton thank you Mr. Mayor Council um, so this evening, I've, I've, we put three uh, packets of information before you. One is just a copy of this PowerPoint that we're going to do initially. Then we have a little spreadsheet with all of our governmental fund projects. And behind each of those, the cover sheet is really just a summary of the total project cost and then how much it is per fiscal year and what the plan, how much we'd spend per fiscal year, and also the funding source. And behind each of those, we have two packets, one for the enterprise funds and one for the governmental funds. And there's a separate sheet with a little more detail on each of the projects. And sort of the thought behind that was, so you could just take them, separate them, and maybe prioritize, oh, I like this one more than this one, and just use them as a tool this evening and to help, you know, help us give us the uh, direction that we're looking for on which ones we'd like to do or like to proceed with. So we'll go through each of them. Um, Frank will be doing a PowerPoint on um, on the governmental funds and the enterprise fund projects, and we'll just talk about each of the projects individually, the pros and cons. Be sure to interrupt us and ask questions as we go along, and, and especially Jack. And, <laughs> and so we're really just lo we're just looking for your input and, and your uh, your guidance. So. Um, Tonight, the first thing we'd like to do is just go over the facilities committee has been meeting. Uh, let's see if I can move that oh, yeah. forward. It still counts as one. Yeah, it still counts as one. We're just seeing if any of these work. If not, I'm just going to go to the. I'll just go to the side here. Um, Cecilia, Frank, myself, and Chuck have been meeting. Oh, really? About the last year and a half or so, looking at our facility needs, and um, and really looking at all the facility needs for the entire town. Some of the things that we looked at is, you know, just the number of full-time uh, equivalent employees we have, what our projections are. Laura's given us a little bit of information on that. And we're just looking at, you know, where are we going to go? Because in most of our facilities, we are pretty well cramped. Uh, Public Works is pretty well cramped. Of course, the police department is. And cramped. <laughs> so we're just trying to look. You know, 5, 10, 20 years out in the future, what are the town's facilities going to need to be? And what changes can we make? Uh, some of the problems is public works and development services share one building and, and they're overcrowded, 13 full-time employees and really no room for growth. Town administration is split between two campuses. And so citizens and staff regularly have to commute back and forth between the two campuses. Um, you know, we get, we get that almost Every day someone comes in, oh, where do I do this? And they're thinking it's here, and then we send them back to send them. And I think that goes back and forth. And staff does spend a significant amount of time going back and forth. I know Frank's had times where he's three to four times a day back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, human resources is working out of a, a space no bigger than a closet. Thank you, Scott, for that. I can see that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it has actually True. gives them the privacy, and they can get away from the employees. So it met that goal. But it's still small. Um, and of course, the Chino Valley Police Department that we brought to you, you know, before is really the one that's significantly undersized and only, as we have here, 25% of the minimum space required based on just national averages. And, and the police department has a lot of other issues, and Chief will get into those specifically, not ADA compliant, with public restrooms, and the way other things. Um, so before any of these things can happen, 
what we're thinking is the police department, that building, that problem has to be solved first. That's like step one, the first domino to fall. So what we've talked about, and this is, of course, all subject to change, and this is what, you know, you guys talk about the pros and cons of this, is that the police department will, will, will basically build a new district. And the idea, the recommendation from staff is that we build it on this campus and how that looks and where it sits, those decisions still need to be made. And so we start that process as soon as council's ready, if, if they so desire, and we just start moving down that road. Eventually, Town Hall will move into the remodeled PD. So we need to have enough funding available to remodel the, the police department after they've moved out. We'll stay here probably the first year. And my proposal, you'll see a little bit later, is that we uh, just start putting money away for that and just pay cash for that. Borrow the money from the police department building uh, as far as the construction, but actually pay cash for just the loan or the design phase of it. And then once the PD's been remodeled, remodel the police department evidence building, move human resources over to that. That's a small project that we can pay for you know, out of our pocket. Uh, Public Works then remodel that building, and uh, depending on how you know how significant that was, and part of that is some of the staff may move over into town hall, so we might bring two or three full time employer or full time employees over to town hall, free up enough room so we can do a, a pretty major remodel on Public Works. We're thinking you know something that's gonna you know new carpet, new paint, but maybe some roof walls or that kind of stuff. But those decisions could be made. You know, those several years out. And then the other idea was actually bringing the court over here so that they're closer to the police department, bring prosecutors and the court and have an attorney's office here. This could be the courtroom. And with very little money, we could secure Jamie's office for the judge and her folks and then a little security up here. So it would work. It, it's an idea. And, and that decision doesn't have to be made now. I mean, that's several years. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chuck and let him talk about just the police department concerns. Yeah, so the arrow will take you down to the next slide. And just click on the next slide. Uh, yeah. Like Mr. Duffy said, there's the police department was outgrown almost 15, 16 years ago. Um, we have between the old food bank building and the current building, we have a little over 4,000 square feet about two thirds of that old food bank building is just evidence storage. Uh, but we also have evidence stored in connect boxes and sheds and you know, different places on the property, which is not a not a great idea. Uh, we had a refrigerator fail with blood kits in it over the weekend. Uh, fortunately, they caught it today before it got too warm and we were able to move it to another refrigerator. But that's partially due to it being in an outbuilding where it's not monitored um, all the time. Uh, the privacy issues, uh, you can't even just say how serious that is. I mean, we cannot have a private conversation in our building. We have to come either to borrow this room, go to lunch, do things. Uh, yesterday we served a search warrant, or the Sheriff's Office SWAT team did. Uh, when they came back to the building to debrief, they had to stand out in the parking lot to do it because we had two suspects in the building. And any conversation in that building can be heard from the holding cells or the interview rooms. So uh, there's no way, nowhere to do that in our building. Um, our staff is split between the two buildings so the detectives and the evidence tech are in one building and then come back and forth to the PD. It's not as big of a trip as going back and forth to town hall, but they make numerous trips every day back and forth um, between the two buildings. Um, our building is not located near the center of town. It's basically back in a residential area. Um, as much as we stay on guys not to speed, it's really difficult when they have a hot call and they need to get out to the highway. Um, even using three north, there's a lot of traffic there. We have to go by McDonald's and the uh, old Alco area, which is a lot of people coming in out of those driveways. So just from a safety standpoint and a response time standpoint, uh, it's better to move us to the center of town and get us on the highway. So as we're com or having to leave on emergency calls, we're exiting right onto the highway. Uh, <clears throat> if in the future that the um, town ever sought accreditation for the department, we would not be able to do it in our current building. That accreditation is a set of standards. They have national standards. It's based on the size of the department. Uh, some departments do, some departments don't. I think right now we have enough projects going, it's not something we'd be looking at right now, but down the road if somebody was interested in that, uh, things like our holding cell areas and stuff, we can never meet the accreditation standards for. So 
I just went through a couple of the I just went through a couple of the areas in the PD where we have um, issues. This is the uh, the lobby area. Those top two photographs are the lobby. That is basically the entire lobby. Uh, if you notice in the top right photo, that little window, that's the only area we have to serve our citizens. Um, we do not have a dispatch center. So if a citizen walks in to report a crime uh, to the station, they actually have to pick up that little phone to the left of the window and speak to the dispatcher. We cannot initiate a call from the PD. It has to go through the dispatcher. So if a second citizen comes in, they have to wait for that first person to get finished on the phone before we can even talk to them. So we can't, we can't even help two people at the same time. Um, there's no public restroom. I'm not, I don't know of any other public building that does not have public restrooms. So we've had people come in and have accidents on our floor before we could get them into the secured area because they have to be escorted past that the top left picture where you see the blue door. Anything past that's our secured area. So for a citizen to come in there, they would have to be escorted. Uh, back to the restroom. Uh, the victims, uh, and I think Councilwoman Perkins can attest, she's been in the building when we're, we're interviewing somebody in the uh, our victim's room, and anybody standing in the lobby can overhear that entire conversation and vice versa. So it's very difficult when you have somebody in there that's a victim of a sexual assault or something like that or domestic violence issue, and we're trying to talk to them, and then anybody coming in the lobby can listen to that conversation. So no privacy at all. This is our holding cell area. The bottom two lefts are our current two cells. Uh, there again, we have a, a very difficult time if we have more than, uh, we're supposed to separate men and women by sight and sound, we cannot do that, so we end up putting somebody, um, yesterday we arrested one gentleman, one lady, so we had to put one in our little interview room and one in the holding cell area. Um, we had a situation last year where we had a number of juveniles arrested and one adult. The adult literally had to sit in the patrol car in the parking lot for eight hours because we couldn't bring them into the station because they have to be separated by sight and sound from juveniles. So the officers were having to go out every five and 10 minutes to check on the person, make sure the heat was still going in the car and they hadn't kicked the window out or things like that. Um, on the right hand side are just a couple of pictures. They're just ideas um, of different types of holding cells. Um, something that if we move forward, we'd need to talk to architect or engineer about what would be cheapest. We don't keep people for long periods of time generally. We're, they're just being held while we process paperwork. But in some cases, if we're doing interviews on a crime and we haven't determined who's going to jail yet, we need to be able to secure those people as we go through and interview everybody. So it's possible something on the, like the lower right where it's just a, a cage type system might even work uh, with a half wall and a toilet. Um, we don't do any kind of food service, but we do need to provide a restroom. Next. Next. The two slides on the left are our current kind of write-up area. A um, couple of the issues we have is those tables that they eat on are the same tables they process evidence on. Uh, it's very not sanitary. Um, I do have to remind them periodically as I walk through, make sure the table was wiped off before you eat your lunch. Um, the other issue is it's, it's one big room, so it's very inefficient for the guys trying to do the paperwork because they're sitting at those computers, but everybody coming and going out of the area is walking in that room, they're eating their lunch, they're talking, uh, so there's just, there's just constant distraction, so it's, it's not the most efficient uh, you know, way for them to do their, their paperwork. The two slides on the right are just, again, some I pulled off the internet of some possibilities of, of write-up areas. I mean, I like, we like the idea of kind of having the community area with the computers. It makes more efficient from the, the uh, tech side of it because we run all the wiring and everything <coughs> in one area. Um, but have that separated from break areas and restrooms and things where people are coming and going on a regular basis. Next. The pictures on the, the right, the top, is our current uh, configuration where we basically just pull the car up to the back door and have to bring people in the back door into the cell area. It's not a very secured system. Um, hopefully somebody did get loose, they couldn't get out, out of our fenced area, but the problem is when we hit a gate, it opens all the gates. So if the gate hasn't closed fully and somebody was to take off, they could run out the gate. Um, the bottom is just this uh, kind of how a sally port would be set up where you would pull the car in the gate closes behind you, you don't take the person out until that gate's closed. Um, once they're in and secure and you come back out, then the other gate opens and you pull forward. Um, the last thing I want is that any of my guys have to back up. That just tends to be with the cars we drive and the blind spots, backing is, is a hazardous, uh, <laughs> not giving the evil eye. But most of our accidents are backing, so as far as the Sally Port, we definitely want something you can pull straight through. Um, some of our space needs, um, 
we definitely need appropriate restrooms and changing areas. We've had several situations, just even recently, where officers have spent their entire shift with urine or blood on their uniforms. We have no shower area for them to shower or change. Um, and that's just, it's just, I couldn't even imagine having to do that. But it's just, um, they don't have a choice. We have no place right now. We need a lobby area that's big enough to serve more than one citizen at a time. Uh, something with a window wide enough, at least we could have two people up there. Because um, we have normally two to three civilian officers that work that front area. But it doesn't really matter how many we have if there's not a window or somewhere there <coughs> to contact the public. We need our holding cells to meet the current standards. Um, we need a proper break room where they can sit down and actually take a break and they're not sitting at the same table they do their evidence on. And in that write-up area, like, it, like I said before, it's just a big distraction for the officers that are trying to get paperwork. Um, we've talked about if we did a building to have a big meeting room, something like this, it would be a community room. Both Prescott and Prescott Valley have that and they're used extensively. So it's, it's something we could use for training, but we can also invite the community if they need to have meetings and things to come in there. And it's set up so that you would entered off a lobby area so you don't go into the secured part of the facility uh, to use the meeting room and then any doors from that room in, into the secured facility are, are locked so that people can't just wander through the building. Uh, we need to you know, try to get all of our staff under one, one roof for efficiency and we need uh, some kind of secured sally port area. I think with that it goes back to Mr. Duffy. All right. So we had a, we met with the Public Safety Committee, Councilman Miller chaired that and their recommendation to us was to if we're going to do this to go out with the instruction management at risk and, and we and this is a recommend this is what Andrew our attorney recommended also on how to continue this so we threw up a proposed timeline just so you can see how <coughs> this would go together and you're really three years out <coughs> basically it's going to take over two years to actually design one get it out to bid and actually build a police department and then remodeling the police department would be in that last third year. So essentially, you don't know how much this is going to cost. We've got we've looked at other police departments that have been built. One of them was 400 a foot, one more than that. So we really don't know the size we want exactly. I mean, Chuck has a good idea, 10, 12,000 feet or so, somewhere in that range. But we just really don't know what it's going to cost us. So our idea was to go out to an RFP for a construction management risk contract, basically hire the designer to design it. And in that proposal process, ask anybody submitting to us, give us the most recent buildings you've done around this size, how much were they per square foot, it, so we can just get a ballpark of whether we're going to be at 300 foot or 500 foot. The Prescott Airport is 700 and se new terminal, 775 dollars that's all I pay money. One in Miranda was around four something a square foot for a nice one, but it looked like a really nice building. And we're not talking about building a Cadillac. We want a nice good Ford or Chevy police department, you know, one that meets the way we are in Trio Valley, you know, that we're just not going to just go and have granite and marble everywhere. It's going to be a good functional building. So that would be the first step in the process is going out for an RFP and, and a facility this size, whether it's it's going to be three and a half to five million, maybe more, we're going to get a lot of firms, maybe out of, out of the valley, I'm sure, but maybe even out of Denver and out of Southern California and stuff. So we will solicit a lot of interest in some really heavy hitters who have done these type of buildings. So that's how we get started, and then the process will just keep rolling along. On the next page, just so I can show you the dollars and cents. Um, you know, we're thinking it's three and a half to five million dollars. This is a uh, quick out the door. With interest rates, um, and basically the idea here is really to pay cash maybe for the design portion of it, use some of the, the capital improvement money that we have. And even at a 4% interest rate, our payment's going to be between 224 and 320,000. Well, right now, there's 2% money out there. I can't guarantee to you guys how long that will last. But uh, we talked to Mark Reeder today, and he's financing things at you know low two percent money, which means it's a great time to borrow money to add a facility. It's you know, it, and hopefully for the next year or two, it will still remain great. The bottom line is we can't afford that payment, 
the town is has a financial wherewithal to, to build this building and make and to make the payment on it. So it's just where the council desires that this is a viable project to move forward with. So and I think with that, I'm happy to entertain any questions. But I'm gonna start around over here and comments, questions. Well it's like anything else. Uh, we just went through a we just went through a uh, out there for years to take care of our roads and so forth that. So I'm just and I know you can go borrow money. You know, but when you borrow money you have to pay it back. And we still don't know how we're going to have roads in our town. So I'm having a hard time swallowing five million dollars to do something else. Corey. I agree with Long there. Um, I would have liked, it would have been nice to actually have this on the table uh, when we were discussing putting the the road out the roads funding out to a, a ballot measure. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe this would have been the type of project that we should have put out to the public instead of the roads. Um, and I don't know that I that's. Think I brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> time factor that we're talking about and just with some of the costs that we've experienced on just a, a steel building you know I I would be surprised if we even get within the, within this number at this point and again comparing to others other cities as well and after what we've seen the last few days we agree wholeheartedly it's the costs are just going up every day the estimate though that you would require to stick to a national average would then require a 20,000 square foot facility, two square foot per po per population. Did I understand the, that? The low the low end is somewhere in the 12,000, 12,500 square foot to the maximum would be about 25,000 square foot. Okay. So, so we're, we're talking so 20,000 is would be a, would that be a Taj Mahal for us? But compared to what we have now, even 12 would be a huge. Joe, as far as making this payment, that's providing that the economy stays where it is. Yeah, yeah, right. but our revenue stream, yeah. I mean, if we go into a recession, we always got that risk. But our revenue streams have been pretty stable. We've seen just good, steady growth. But if construction dies off, I mean, that'll be our first hit. This will be okay. But then if, you know, I don't think Safeway's gonna close, and they're our major sales now. We're pretty, I, I feel pretty confident we have our reserves fully met, more than almost double. So, I feel pretty confident we'll be able to move forward. And as far as borrowing, this is when municipalities borrow. When they build facilities, they're going to last 50 plus years. You know, and this is when you use private funds to do it. You just make the payment, pay it off in 25 years, and then spring clear for that. You know, so, and, and really with very low interest rates. Can you hear me? I'm going to um, say I have lots of questions processing. Okay, I'll come back to you, Annie. <coughs> well, um, first of all, I, I would love to see some way of putting a 50 50 deal where we could do 50% of whatever it is into the building and then 50% on the roads to match it up. Because I, I agree with Lonnie on the roads. Um, roads are very important. Um, and it's not something we can just let go anymore because they've been let go too long. Um, the police department was started and never provided for. Um, I think we all know that. They were put wherever they could fit. You know, they were in uh, where Laura is now initially. And then they were over there, right? But that building was a food bank or something originally, or a, it was County Art Health or a so WIC Center. Yeah. Are you talking about the public works building? No, no, no. His where the PD is now. I think it was, it was built. built for something else, oh, okay. and then they overtook it. Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was a County Health thing. You know, like, 
That was yours too, but that's how they got a lot of those buildings done. Yeah, they done. were CDBG money. Built right. <clears throat> so the department's never been provided for, and you know, so I'm not arguing that they have needs. <coughs> And but five million dollars is a lot of needs, especially when we already have the big black eye that you get every time you drive everywhere in this town. So I may or Annie and I were at the we're on the uh, public safety. Public thank safety you, public committee. safety committee. Mike was out of town, and we come up with the recommendations of getting a for sure cost or a for sure ballpark because. One and a half million dollars is a lot of dollars in between to be off just for guessing. So I think we need to get a price and then see if maybe we can't get five million and put some of the roads and some of the police department to try to balance things out. And maybe that's not a good idea, I don't know, but until I know what the cost is actually going to be, then I don't know how we can make a decision. Of course you can. You're saying five million that would be financed in ten years. From I'm now. just throwing that out for a number. Right. And so if that's the number you're saying, then we would finance part of the money that we would use for road maintenance. If we could. Okay. If I we could. Make sure I understand what you're saying. Some way to get a balance to where we're doing <laughs> we're appeasing both halves. Okay. Boys. Okay. A I agree the police department needs a lot of work. A the, the money is tough when we can get it at a low interest rate that's a good thing but also as Jack pointed out the fact our roads are deteriorating rapidly and this winter if we have a reasonably good winter I'll really put a dent in them a few little potholes as the saying goes so I think the hard come up with a hard cost I believe if we can get the low interest rate and kind of in apples and oranges a the new building in the police department is one kind of subject the other one being the roads which we went out and spoke to the people about they told us they didn't have that great of a concern about the roads by their vote response so I think looking at it and if we can get easy money or low interest rate money that will work within our existing budget that would be the thought but a good hard cost would be the keystone to begin the process. Mike. Mike. Well, Joe said we had the money to do the design and the engineering, find out what it's going to cost to build this building. So we're not borrowing money to find out the exact number. And I'm sorry, I've been in and out of our police department talking to Chuck and everybody else over there. And they need a place. Uh, I'm not sure about the design, but I would just think off the top of my head, sometimes it's cheaper when you design it to make it two-story. Then you get all your privacy, everything on the second floor, and the thing that you deal public with can be downstairs. And I think that would help their needs for having privacy and where they can go ahead and conduct business as a police force, and then go ahead and also have availability for training and for the general public to come in and out. Uh, but I think we ought to spend Joe's money to go ahead and find out exactly what it costs to design that works for us, for our police department, and go from there. I just think right now we're just spinning our wheels because we don't know. Okay, generally the consensus is, I, I really don't have a no-no. What I have is let's go ahead and see what it costs, and if it's feasible, then we can make a decision whether we want to do it or not. Does that meet everybody's needs? And yes, we have road issues and we, we have to deal with those. But if we're, if we're even thinking about doing any construction, we need to have an idea what it's going to cost. And I didn't ask Andy. Andy, yeah, are I'm you just ready in the now? corner. <laughs> um, well, first and I, foremost, the police department, love y'all. Like that's, it, it, that's awful. It is. It's. Uh, it's. It's bad. The thought that they they process evidence where they eat their lunch. I mean, it's just. I don't. If everybody's taking a tour, it's just bad. It's just bad. And as far as the the interview room, thanks for throwing me under the bus on that one, Chief. Um, yeah. It. Uh, 
that. I mean, so I'm all for it. I am 100% in support of the police using um, a building that at least is up to code, you know, and um, meets the requirements. It's just kind of sad. I also agree uh, the sentiment with the roads. You know, it's it's hard to to swallow that big of a chunk of money, knowing that um, our roads are are so rough. And maybe I didn't even know it was possible legally to take out a loan and s split some of it um, to go towards the roads or not. I don't know if that's an option. <coughs> Typically, when you borrow money <coughs> for road improvements, you do it for major reasons. So, like, if we were, that has a useful life of at least 20 years, because you're going to borrow money for at least 20 years. You don't want to borrow money to put chip seal or just overlays down, because seven to 10 years later, as we know, we're going to be putting it down again, and you're still paying interest. You're still making payments on it. So, like, a project that would fit under the borrow money would be like redoing two north, right? Yeah. <laughs> and borrowing the two or three million dollars or whatever. Well. 10 or 20 million, whatever Frank comes up Good. with. <laughs> yes, life. But that project, because it's such a core project in the middle of town, would justify borrowing money for it. But you could also leverage your HERF dollars and use that as the revenue stream and security for it. But when you do that, then you decrease the amount you can put on the roads every year. So I wouldn't recommend that. You know, I, you know, I, I said loan, but that's not it's really cool. what. You can interrupt me. That's not what I really meant. I just meant if we can. <laughs> you know, balance the spending. Because I think we're looking for a black eye if we build a $5 million station and still ignore the roads. Yeah. So because we didn't have money for roads, but we have money for a $5 million station. You know, so. Well, I just mean get a balance there somewhere. But I mean, uh, any building that we <coughs> build will be here forever. No, for wait, forever is a long time. I know. It'll be here for. So if loans paid off, it means stuff. Can he say he was using Phoenix <laughs> contractors and California <laughs> contractors? Uh, so I'll just have you back to it. Nuclear Design power plant, we can all be toast. Uh, I, I think so. Well, forward. we can't make a decision. Well, you don't. Right, what, I, I, what I'd like to do is bring us to a council meeting and have a vote on it. I, 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 uh, okay. Adding. A vote on, um, okay. on whether Annie, we Annie's start. Still is talking. I know, I take a long time Would to get like? all my thoughts okay, out. Okay, Annie. But uh, I communicate better writing. Um, at any rate, I like the, I, I want to, I want a number, I want the design number, okay. and uh, I want to also address the roads, because again, I think we're all on the same page on that one, I think. Good. Now, don't anybody get excited. <laughs> there is one issue that it's out there, and I think we have to explore it. Um, it's our job as, to me as a council member to bring it up, and that is to find out what is the cost of going to the county and basically not having our own police department. I think we have got to at least weigh that, weigh that out, because um, it is it is there. I think we looked at that about six, seven years ago. We did. We sent a survey out to the citizens, and the number one issue is they wanted to spend our money on public safety. Now it was response time was the big thing that they talked about. Time, so was the fact that we can go out and do that again, and maybe we. I don't, think, I don't think Bruce talking about is a survey because you know I had thought about the same thing. You know, it's are we doing the best thing? And I know we got a bunch of officers here that we all all appreciate, but by the same token, <coughs> we have to look at living within our means. So it since we are an island and we've got the county all around us, I see just as many sheriff going through town as I do our police officers. Now a heck of a lot of troopers too in new cars. You know, are we just like what the fire department did? They couldn't afford to stand alone, so they came together so they could save enough money to keep everybody going. Is that something that's realistic for this county? Well, I tell you, if you want twenty to thirty minute response times, because the sheriff's office <coughs> can't even staff the department. Their department now They're, they have forced over time. Um, and the citizens, I think, the, the reason they live in a town is for better service. We already combine with the sheriff's office for dispatching, records management, computers. You know, we're basically are married to them in a lot of ways. But, you know, to go to them for the actual response time and calls, I mean, you guys have to answer the citizens, but their average time is probably 20 plus minutes. 
ours is under three usually. 20 plus minutes to where? Just anywhere in the county. Any place. They're not going to add more deputies to this area. It's just like dispatching. We give them a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. They didn't hire any more dispatchers. They were on the same channel that the, sh the deputies are on. So they didn't add staff. We get worse service because we close our doors at five o'clock when we used to be open like Denny's 24 seven. So you're gonna see a huge, huge drop in service because they're not gonna be able to staff any more people. I mean, if they hire our guys, they're gonna spread them out over the whole entire okay. county because they're understaffed countywide. But their, their response times in our area, the Chino Paulin area, a lot of times the deputies are coming from Prescott, Prescott Valley. And that's why you're seeing them screaming through here a lot because they're, they got nobody up on the high line and they're, they're running you know, people up to Ash Fork and Paulden and uh, Seligman and those areas. <coughs> one guy working up there. So every time they need backup, they're screaming people up there from, from this area. So. so the county or sheriff's department, they don't live under the same rules that your police or our, our police department does. Correct. In which you brought up several times that it's a square mile issue. We have to have X amount of officers to cover those there are standards, but you know, unfortunately, our county is larger than like five states. Yeah. So the, the sheriff's office, there's no way they could meet, you know, the same as a, a small county up in the northeast where the county's a fraction of the size. And that's by populace, not by square foot. That's not what I understood. Is that which which way is it? I thought it was square miles. Well, I think they can. No, we work. They dice it every. Which there's way different ways to do it. I mean, we look, look at right there. population. Oh, that is what we're doing. Population. That's for square footage. That's how big a building you need. Building based oh, no, on per residence. That's where I got my. Yeah, per resident. No, no, I was talking about how many police officers. I always understood that it had to be with this, the amount of square miles that we have in town. That it doesn't matter whether there's one house five miles out that's all by itself. We still have to be able to respond to that. Right. Our, so, sta our staffing is based on calls for service and number of residents. Because obviously, as population increases, calls for service increase. That's the way Firewoods too is by population. Not we're, we're, we're a very unique town because you don't find many towns that are 65 square miles. You know, like we have where we have a population center, but we have that ranch that's way out there yeah. that we rarely go to, but you know, we still have to respond if they call. Right. But you know, our staffing levels are basically, I mean, we're understaffed, but we base it on basically calls for service, you know, being able to respond in a timely manner. There are some Federal law enforcement grants, have we looked into those? Joe's looked at USDA. Yeah, USDA actually has a grant program. I think we qualify for up to 20%. They saw our population 20 or 25%. And they have some low yeah, interest yeah. loans. And too. so, and we may go to them for a low interest loan too. So we will look at that, but I'm not going to tell you we're going to yeah. get 25% off until <coughs> I know we get 25% off. But yeah, there, there is a potential for that. So, Joe, with your plan uh, with the building, uh, you borrowed the money. Uh, you said at this point, if we don't do anything with the roads, we can, we can afford the bank. Right. Um, how long is that for? Would you guess me? Probably a 25 year loan. Okay. And if we do that and we commit to it, then that's pretty much like going and buying a house. That's, mm -hmm. that's our major payment. All of our state share revenues will grow. Our sales tax revenues should grow. You know, if borrowing the economy just taking another nosedive, we're going to be fine. And you know, we roll over about a half million dollars a year just because of how conservatively we budget. So this will chew up half that. And if we continue to budget, continue to hold staff levels down, you know, as in the short run, the next five years, we can do that. We're, we're going to be fine because I don't see I see us continually rolling that half a million dollars a year over. So this will eat up half that, and the other half we could roll into roads, which you have enough you can put into roads. So you're fifty fifty more. Money. So yeah, it is a payment. It is debt. It is interest. I get all that. I understand it. But this is the type of project that you use debt because it, it's going to last future generations. And 
interest rates are at historic lows right now. Oh, I, I so, realize yeah. that. I, I get Which it. I'm earning, you know, a little over a percent and a half from the state treasures, the money that we have in there each month. And we're going to be borrowing money at 2%. So our net cost is a half a percentage point if you look at it that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I can't guarantee we're going to get 2%, but we're going to be in the low twos. No, I'm not arguing that a bit. I'm just trying to figure out and trying to live within our means. How do yeah. we do it? You know, how do we? And we have been. That's well, why we, we haven't been. Because well, we haven't been servicing our roads. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're, you are <laughs> correct. <laughs> you are correct. So that's why we're sitting here. You know, the next subject yeah. is we have this capital improvement fund money that we've put in here that we need to spend, you know, for the community. So because our reserves are fully met. So yeah, we built that up, but we also have put that money on the roads too. I get that. Too. Yeah. Yes, sir. How many years did they take the hurt money? Three or five oh, or gosh. Right, yeah. ten. Yeah. Oh, it I started can't. trickling back. Yeah, yeah, but, so we lost that HERP fund for X number of years, which the impact is on our roads. We're seeing it today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Well, but that's with, true, but we were behind. I mean, we still yeah. knew we weren't going to yeah. be able to keep up. And our but now we're going to be getting that HERP fund, which we can properly plan. Hardly, a little bit. We actually got a one-time distribution of $196,000 this year. And we and that's what about. we're spending on this last contract. So. Uh, but I think that was a one-time distribution. Okay. Uh, when the census comes out, our population will grow, but so is everybody yeah, in the state. So the, whole, the ocean just went up, and we're still going to get our proportionate share. We did take a hit because our population went down at the last census. Yeah, and that, that really hurt yeah. us. That really hurt us. Yeah. Also, when they swept her, the revenues were down because of the economy on top of that. So it was a double whammy. Yeah. Not just the sweep, but the actual revenues were down. Okay, where are we going to go, folks? We beat this to death. Right. So, may I recommend the staff uh, for the agenda item that we put together the construction management risk proposal, the RFP, and let that be your decision point if you want us to go out. Give me some actual RFP. cost. Yeah, well, that's what we'll do. Go out for RFP, have all the firms come in, give us a proposal, and just get a ballpark number, and we'll either award the contract or not based on the cost figures that we receive. Are there any other purchasing ways where you actually can kind of put it out for developers um, that would, because we, we just get beat up terrible mm -hmm. every time we go out to these RFPs, that is there to go out for, again, a developer, hey, this is what we're looking for. Come give us a, a total package type pricing. Is that? Well, <clears throat> like the federal government does with their buildings, and I don't know if this is where you're going, the private developer comes in and builds it and leases it to them mm -hmm. for 25 years, and then the property will remit like if it was on our property and remit back to us. Okay. But you know that cost is going to include the cost of financing, the cost profit. of interest, and profit on top of it. So our net cost over 25 years will probably be greater, I'm sure it will. But that's but the annual cost might be a little less. Yeah. Um, we could also just do, we could just go out for an RFP for just, and essentially this is what we're doing. The RFP is for the design firm to come in. And we'll have, we'll have three to five of them. We can interview them all. We can talk to them all. And then decide if we want to hire one of them to design the and then as we get about 40% of the design, then we go out to bid for the contractors. Our decision point is after we find out what it's going to cost. Right. That's if, our decision point, if whether we, we do it or not. Yeah. And so I think with the RFP process, we'll have some good estimates, and we'll have each of the firms give us what they think the twelve, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollar $18,000 building will be, and they're going to give us ranges. And then we can see if we fit in that range. But we won't know the true cost until we get out to bid with the contractor. I think we're talking about two different things. You're talking about what you want is the cost at next council meeting, but he's talking about what he wants his approval to go out to get the cost. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, he has to have that. To get the get design firms That'll come in. at the next council meeting. I'm right to think, right? 
Well, I was just going to say, I think I probably need to look this up, but I think under state law, if you're doing construction manager at risk, you can do a short list based on qualifications and then have your top three or however many firms that you have um, provide a, a once and best offer for actually to do the RFP rather than an RFQ have that come back with a price component for the short list. Would be, I think you can do that. I'd have to check with okay. probably legal or state law for that. But However you guys do it, the decision will be made after we get a good estimate of what the cost would be, and then we'll decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Okay. So we are approving. So we'll we're not doing nothing today. today. No, I know, but we're recommending so we'll that he goes out and recruit the RFQ. I would just like to have Andrew have the documents all drafted so you guys can just approve the RFP. Well, we may not approve it. When it's done. Yes, well, yeah. Okay. So it won't be Nick, it won't okay. be able to be <laughs> in a couple of meetings. A couple of meetings. Yeah, 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 but we'll bring it to you. Because okay. we have, we are going to be meeting with Andrew and talking about other procurement I don't like to make these kind of meetings unless I know what it's going to cost and that cost is on the table. Fair, and fair. Then based on response times and our school resource officers and our growing population. I think that um, our police department needs to stay here. That's my O2. I'm with you, Amy. Okay. All right. So is, is that, do you have enough direction now? Can we go on to the next item? Yes. Okay. Um, so the next item is we have the government funds capital project spreadsheet, the summary, and we just talked about is the that It's not, no PowerPoint, um, just for you. Uh, <laughs> but we did just talk about the police department building. The next big area on the spreadsheet is Old Home Manor, and I think our next discussion point ought to be what do you guys envision for Old Home Manor? Um, we put several things out there, uh, building a spec building, about a $600,000 number. Um, developing a few lots so that we could have lots all ready to go, ready to build. Another $700,000 number. Uh, I put on there a gas line. It's going to be around $700,000 to get natural gas up to the park. And also a fiber optics line, which is about $100,000. Now this has all come from the capital improvement fund, the, the $2 million removed from the general fund over to do capital projects. So that's where the funding source is. Um, the other two things, or the other three things that we have on there is one, pay down debt. I've put in there, we'll need about $500,000 to pay off our last line of credit that we got to buy our last round of police cars and equipment. It'll save us about 17,000 in interest but it'll also free up about $173,000 of cash a year that we can use to pay cash for our police cars and for other pieces of general government equipment over the next few years to get us in that position where we're just not borrowing money to buy, to buy equipment. And then Frank has a slide, of a, a brief presentation on Road 2 North, both East and West, and that's gonna be, we could use a portion of this capital improvement fund maybe to start to design or, or pay for a portion of it. Um, but a lot of that is water and sewer, so it's gonna include probably borrowing money from there for, and because these are gonna be major projects and major sewer extensions. Which one? These two down there. No. Oh, huh? You I think it's the, it's the second or one down. This one? That's yeah. Road 2 Northeast. Are we going on now past Old Home Manor? Yeah, so I think maybe we should discuss Old Home Manor and get your get council's thought on, on what that Let's talk, let's really discuss Old Home Manor. Hi, Will. Hi, Wood, how you doing? Oh, it's a prescription, I can't read oh, that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good talk. Thanks. Okay, so Old Home Manor, I'll, I'm just gonna jump in here. Sure. Um, I think, my understanding, 
understanding is that there are different opinions, which is a good thing, on what should be planned out at Old Home Manor. And we've been leaning to a spec building to show um, businesses what the possibilities are and have done a lot of work um, in that process. I didn't realize it was up to 50,000 square feet. I've heard um, a couple of different things as far as, you know, just a couple small buildings, smaller buildings. And I've also heard recruiting a large manufacturing company to come out and set the, kind of set the bar um, and bring jobs. So uh, Old Home Manor is something that I invested in. Um, and I think we really need to come to a general consensus because I think we're very divided and there's not a plan of where we actually want to go with that. And I think it's been that way for three years now. So it's kind of frustrating. Very well said. Thanks. <laughs> I'm confused because in our utilities meeting, we said that we were going to go ahead with the sewer and water extension and it never came to council. And that wasn't out of this two million dollars, and now it's in the two million dollars. This has been a couple of years ago. Am I am I, I misdirect? I don't even think it's been that long. What <coughs> we had a, at least a consensus of was that we thought by the numbers that Joe threw out there that it was realistic to go in and almost do like a cul de sac or a T mm -hmm. and expose four to six lots that could be built on, get the road in, get the infrastructure in, so that if Maggie gets somebody on the line, she can go out and say, you can have that one right there and start building. So what happened to that? There. I, I don't know what happened to Where's that. Where's the plan for what we're going to do to Old Home Manor? I haven't seen a plan. Well, we haven't had an economic development person in place. So. Let's get us a plan. Those taste before I, before I make a decision, I want to see a plan on the steps that we're going to do. I, I wish you would have said that before we already rezoned it as a business park. Well, I, I had no problem. And that, and that really was my issue all along because we didn't have a plan okay. and we rushed into something that has now capped what we can even do out there at this point because of the regulations that we put into place. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to go deal with this tonight until I see a plan from staff on what the steps are to, to move Old Home Manor and what it will you want to deal with well, I, I think staff need, still need some direction on what 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 area do we want to go. Okay, but I still would like an answer to my question I've been asking for a year or however long it's been. I never heard about it before, sorry. That's but because it, it was done <laughs> in utilities and it should have progressed forward to council, right? So, the next step. So what was the direction that you gave? He just explained to you. He's going to put in a T road with water and sewer to op expose four or five lots. So and that was, plan never got out of utilities and the roof. It, it, it was ahead. in an area. It was in an area where um, staff felt like we could go in and do this. And even without having a total uh, plan of uh, a topo of the whole place, what levels were going to be, that it could be dealt with if that started building up and then go ahead and finish it. it. It would not be a problem with too small a water line, you know, too small a sewer line, uh, yeah, level of building sites or anything Mark like that. Holmes was involved in that meeting, if I remember right, right? Um, that actually, I think, came later. Okay, well, whenever yeah. it was, but I can't remember because they get mixed up with everything. But I know that we approved that, and it never went nowhere. And I just what was that know, number, that's why. Was it a million dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking. Less. You were in there, weren't you? Well, yeah. He was the one that told I us. Thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, because you told me to Well, I'm like Jack. I can't remember that. <laughs> but that's that's where this, the developed lot idea came from, is that's what is transitioned to here. That's the But what I'm lot. saying is we had the money before, but now we're trying to spend the $2 million surplus oh, on it. Oh, we have, we have the money. We actually have in budgeted, we have, Old Home Manor Master Plan right now for I think two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So we have the money to start the process already budgeted. 
plus we put in another 700 from the capital improvement fund. So we still have the money. We haven't done it yet. <coughs> have the roads all been finished? Is there a sign out there it's on not the finished. property? Mm -hmm. No. So mm -hmm. we so really Rome Junction has yet to be be done. Yet to be done. So we're not even close. I went to council last week. It was talked about over a year ago, yeah, this whole right. thing. Well, we were going to have water and sewer right, right down Jerome Junction, you know, from some time ago. And then we, we had uh, whatever the, that one outfit came in, and they, they showed us all kinds of things. And I think we pretty much agreed at that time, let's just get it down the street. We even talked about possibly like two signs. Yes, yeah. that, so, again, yeah, Maggie yeah, yeah. or whoever could then say, okay, you yeah, have so water and sewer the down the street. No. Here, here is an area that could be developed. The same and then everybody, had, I believe the consensus at that time was that let's let's hold up there instead of starting to develop something. Let, let's wait and see if we get any bite on it. That's when we discovered what we were zoned as public land, which then that doesn't work at all for that. And we started going down that, that direction of that zoning change just to make it into something that could be marketable other than a public land zoning and we went right into the where we are so personally i'm good at holding we get water and sewer down there joe did mention possibly extending gas closer yeah, gas because of any yeah. big manufacturer that comes in is going to want gas mm -hmm. but again now i'm talking big manufacturer but i'm locking big employer but what we voted in you know as a business park, it, it's kind of pointless anyway, because it's not zoned for that. And anyone that looks at it says, well, it's not proper anyway. I, I think the so. first proposition we've done that helps with, so I don't think that's an improvement. So the sign, the monument signs are coming. We have received bids on it, and we fine-tuned the bids. I actually, right before the meeting, I did look at the final draft. So that's going to be a project that we bid out all the town signs and then we bid out the um, old home manor signs as a bid alternate. So those are coming, and they're in our budget already. So And we have paving, and we have asphalt. Coming. And we have asphalt, so, that, that so those are coming. And so this is really what we're looking for here is, what's our next step? Is it the gas line? Is it developed lots? What else, what's the next step in old home manor? What do you guys think? I would like to hear uh, council members go and and actually project their personal vision, what they would like to see, because I think we're so confused and divided. Ideally, 10 years from now, what do you want to see at Old Home Manor? Go. Can I go with first? <laughs> okay, she's in charge, you guys. I just think we're, we're so confused, we have no idea what we actually want. Huh? I thought we wanted Old Home Manor to be a productive place. Okay, let's okay. Yes. Let's yeah. start. Go around. What I'm going back and Jack thinks Print Pack was the first thing to come to Prescott Valley. I think it was better built aluminum, and that to me was the first big employer that that Prescott Valley had. Chino has no core employer. Employer. Okay. So to me, that's what we need to. That's what we need to snag for our town. Now realizing every other town in this country is looking for that as well but we're, we're developing a population here a, a workforce that, that's traveling to Prescott I think we and you know and we have an airport that's coming so I think we're getting more into something that might be an attractive to a manufacturer like that um, but again that, that zoning thing limits us from putting in a better bill better bill will not qualify for the zoning that we did out there. And, but you look at it, it's away from everything. That's why the shooting range is out there. That's the type of, of development that I think the town needs to get kickstarted. Now, once you have that core business that brings money into our community, then we're gonna, re then we're gonna focus more on our mom and pop businesses and, and that second tier of business so that we can keep the money in our town instead of going back into the Prescott area. But that will come, you know, capitalism takes care of that one. Mm -hmm. But we got to get that first step. And to me, to lower these standards out there, I don't care about a stucco wall out there. 
I don't care about 50 foot of landscaping. I care about getting something in here that's going to get this economic engine driven. We, we put the roads out to, to vote. Personally, I would ch just see Chino as a bedroom community. I would love to just pay a property tax that can support our police department, complete our roads, and keep it more of a small community. Well, the people voted against it. So now that forces, in my mind, us to go into an economic development mode. And I think that is the type of business that we need to get, you know, get situated here. And then the rest will take care of itself. So there. Did you practice that? I've said it more than once. <laughs> Mark? Well, I'm not arguing that point at all. I would love to see something like that here in Floyd. I'm not sure that even though we zoned Old Old Manor the way that we did it, that if we had something come and offer it, that if we went on the outskirt, you know, the north side of the business park, that we still couldn't still make something like that happen. Um, we do have a vote in that. So uh, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I mean, if, if, if something pops up, Maggie can pull something in, or somebody comes to us, then I, I'd certainly be happy to look at it. What we were talking about, So the idea was to, I think, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm just going to use it arbitrarily, the million dollars. Joe says, okay, we've got this much money. I would be in favor of taking a million dollars, going out there, and having a road with a curb at six different lots. you got to have electric, you got to have gas, you got to have water. So all the infrastructure has to go in, too. And there again, now you've got buildable lot with utilities for somebody if they drive in they say where can I build you can say right there and they can take out a building permit and they can go to work now if we get that all done and we're still feel like we're looking okay and we decide we might want to do a spec building later on down the road we can take a look at that but right now we're trying to we're trying we, we can't afford to develop that whole area and now we're trying to sell out of an empty basket. So I'm forgetting something there that people can see. So completing the infrastructure, the gas line and the fiber optic, ought to be job one. Oh yeah, it's hard to build a road. Getting, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. yeah, and getting the water and sewer there, but water, we, get, sewer, we need sewer. to get the gas line up there. Yeah. Do we not have water and sewer there? We have it to the corner. To the corner. We're on standby. Okay. So that's oh, yeah. where we build the lots. And and so we just have these great stands. Uh, go in and set out some plots. So do we, you know, something that I would, I would like to see uh, our economic development girl, Maggie. 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 Maggie sorry. Um, before we start going down that road of dividing up lots, I, I think we need to then have those discussions of. What are our lease agreements? What we need to, to do a little bit more homework of, are we 20 years? Are we rent for a dollar a year kind of stuff? I think we need to narrow that in a bit. And what size are we looking at pieing this up into? Um, and then what, what I look at out there is what, I wanna see what the return on this is going to be. I have done a couple buildings myself where I look and say, okay, how big a building, I, I'm looking for a rental, I'm looking to return on my personal money, how big a building can I build? What's the attraction? What am I gonna get? Am I better off at just doing 1,000 square foot units or do I need a 5,000? What is my return? If we're gonna get into the business of developing, then we need to start having these numbers just like any other developer. Now that kind of scares me as far as the government getting involved as becoming developers. Um, creating a front and say, here, this is, you know, what, you let that person come to us and say, hey, we're looking, I, I got a 100 employee operation. You know, 
would you have? Well, this is what we have to offer you. And then go from there. But not, not break it up quite, not getting into the developing side. Okay, just one it, more thing to, to, to focus on the next person is, if you get that rope in there, and I'm just envisioning this as a rope in off a rodeo and maybe a tee, you don't have to split it into a certain size lot. You wait until the person comes and says, Somebody tells you what they're willing to spend money on. But yes. they at least have a road and utilities there to do something. So you're saying do more than just Jerome <laughs> Junction as that road. You're like actually get yes. get get back in there a little deeper. Yeah. 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 Mike, you're next. Well, I like the idea of having something to see. I mean, we all have gone ahead and looked for homes or built homes or what have you, and we all need to a picture in our mind. Not many of us can go ahead and have a blank paper and say, "Oh yeah, I know what it's going to be," in their head. You got a plan. You got to see something that makes you. Then you're your wheels start turning upon that plan. I like the idea, and I'm sorry we never got it to council, the idea of having utilities, a road there, and then a developer can come out. I've heard a whole bunch about this uh, airplane manufacturer coming to Prescott, and I don't care what your big problem is or your big product is, you need subcontractors to build the parts to build your airplane. And I think we would be in a prime location to go ahead and get their parts, their raw materials, whatever. They make what they want and right down the highway five miles and they got their parts. I know Prescott's going to try to keep all the subcontractors right there in their own back pocket, backyard. But if we have something to show them, maybe we can get a couple of those contractors. It's called borrowing. <laughs> They can't, I know. So we would have and we would have a nice facility to show them. And that's what I look like. We may not have the man, the big company that you were talking about, but all the subcontractors I'll take. It. That, that airport, the runway is going to be extended eventually. It will be the big, the big cargo aircraft. Yeah. And there will be Fire. a lot of other businesses. I'm good. I think A, we got to have the backbone, meaning the core down the a road, water, sewer, gas, electric, the utilities to do it. And then solicit for someone that will come in and whatever their needs are, divide as the needs fill in, not, you know, cut the preset format. Let it go with the people that are interested in spending the money to build something here. Yeah. And that, that's what I'm seeing. I'm, I've heard a lot of this going on. And from what I've heard, we've had Old Home Manor, meaning we, the town, for a couple of years. And it's <laughs> been a, a long-term <laughs> goal. Long. Okay. So by putting in the necessary things for a business to build from, water, sewer, utilities, the fiber optic, if it's there, they're much more likely to show up other than, well, this this big field here, and we can do this, we can do that, but if we have that core, the base foundation in place, then they can buy the land or whatever that they want to build on. That's what I got Please. to say. Jack? My turn? Yeah. Not really, we were just kidding. Could you <laughs> <interrupt> <laughs> me? Oh, well, what I'd like to see, what I would like to I see, was with manners. what I would like to see in Chino Valley, out there at Ono Manor, everywhere, in 10 years, as all of us down at Bell Real School listen to uh, Latigo play music and uh, having a dance and eating hamburgers and hot dogs. But those days are gone. <laughs> yes, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're gone. Because everybody in town would be there and it won't hold everybody in town. So, that won't work. But I had a thought that we oh, could build a building out of a whole manor and lease it to the police department. <laughs> <laughs> so then you they would fix get the road to get me out to the highway, though. <laughs> so that they could uh, then uh, lease it from us and they pay for it and then they get their building too. No, um, I don't know about 10 years, I don't have 10 year vision, but what I have now is the vision of getting it started. Um, you go to the 
everywhere you go, it lists leagues of uh, uh, cities that we went to last this year. But last year they had a big thing on this, and they said you got to have more than just dirt. Dirt ain't going to get you nothing. You got to have something, and they were saying buildings. So I don't know if we want to go that far. I can talk to you more about that because I looked into it because it, it was brought up again at this last one. Mm -hmm. Well, what and I heard was do. one person's they, opinion. They usually have a little bit more in their back pocket. About tax breaks and they're, all that. They're not just being spec. Cities are not just being speculators. Mm -hmm. And the one that happened to be Freeport McMoran, which actually supported that town. Mm -hmm. So there was already that core of what they out wanted. there of what they wanted. Sure. So it, it wasn't sure. quite as much speculative as you are thinking. But honestly, it just seems like we've been talking about and talking about and talking about a whole manner, and nothing's done. But the cities are doing exactly what Lon is saying and, ex and what we're talking about, is you make the land available. It's not the cities that, that own these buildings and are leasing them. The cities do own the land is, is more of what I'm learning, yeah. but not the, not the buildings. They open up this area and say, you know, come on, so bring your paintbrush. Draw but picture. also on that same respect, when that manufacturer, if he goes belly up or what have you, the town then owns that property. The, yes, the it's still on town property. I mean, no, we own that building. Yeah, oh, that's what yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you ready? Uh, I'm almost ready. <laughs> and I don't, it's five years I've been talking about local manor since yeah. way back before the equestrian center. It was just a vision. Um, Cecilia, what businesses has Maggie been getting the most response from? What type of businesses? The most interest, any interest? Nothing that I would say is like a serious bite. Is she leaning one way or the other as far as what businesses she's looking at? Because I, I think that... No, I don't think she's too... She needs direction. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I think even the zoning gave her plenty of direction. It, there's still a lot there. I, I guess what I'm saying is she's not just narrowing it down to, to try and be right. too exclusive. Right. So that, I mean, in my opinion, we've always kind of been community of opportunity so she's trying to keep every option open um, you know she's been here what five months right uh, right now she's at a grocery store thing over in LA so I mean she's competing between stuff on retail as well as Old Home Manor right now she hasn't had much discussion on stuff for Old Home Manor because we don't have, we don't have anything to give her <laughs> okay so here's my two cents What, ma'am? Uh, Did I interrupt you? <laughs> Please <laughs> no. let me apologize. Okay. okay, so Old Home Manor, the way I see it is two sides. I see the rec side, which I love, uh, your softball field. Thank you. Um, we need to mow the grass. <laughs> the range, <laughs> um, the equestrian center, the hopeful RV park. Which I think there was yeah. some There's chatter about, yeah. and that would benefit the equestrian center and the range and revenue, and it's temporary, correct? Two week maximum for the RV park? I don't think those details have been ironed okay. out. I think we would. The intention that is not to have long term. Okay. Right. Yeah, I would never. Right. Um, uh, so I like that for the east side of Old Home Manor. And the west side of Old Home Manor, which I will be viewing from my front porch where I have. I like <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, I know we've been going down the road of okay, let's build a building. If you know what I mean, to show people what it would look like. But it might make more financial sense to do the road with the T and run um, the utilities because then we're not limited. We can show a building and be like, great, that's not what we want. Like, Chief needs a new building. They researched what they wanted on Google. You know what I mean? They came up with an idea of what he wanted. Um, so I don't, I think if we say, okay, here's your open space, and we have everything connected to it, then they can take the ball and roll with it how they so choose. Um, 
So I would be, I, that's where I'm at. I'm in support of running the road with the teeth. Let, let me kind of summarize exactly where we want to go ahead. We want to bring sewer water sign and get it ready. And once we go through that process, run a road down, maybe identify some plots, and then levy the sewer okay. system. And yeah, I think in this technological age, fiber and gas fiber and are gas. probably. Yeah. Okay, so, so if we were to be able to get Frank, I guess it's probably your department. What the cost per foot is to run that package, and then we can see how far we can run the road. Yeah, and kind of work it backwards. Okay. okay. Annie, your stone's yours. Um, Councilman, I still like to go back to my initial question, and, I, and the reason why I'm doing this is because the money was there to do the water and sewer back then. And now we're, we got this water, this design and, and this construction of the sewer coming out of the $200 overfund thing. The $2 million. Okay, so $2 million. I think, million. I think that's where it was to begin with. It was. Yeah. It was. it was all in the capital. We still have money in the capital improvement fund. We just moved $2 million from the general fund over it and put the piles higher now. That's so it's three, it's, it's three point whatever million. Well, yeah, whatever it is. Exactly. Because the way this reads is coming out of the $2 million. Because no. we have reserves for that. So. You, you understand where I'm at, everybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I think that's what I'm saying. Is when Joe told us, you know, we could take a million dollars and go do this, he said, I'd be game to take a million dollars of that money. It's just this last year that we moved it over. decided to just take $2 million out of that capital improvement fund and move it out here to do something with it. So we only have $2 million, not $3 million. Well, I don't know the exact fund balance of the capital improvement fund of the $2 million sitting in, but I'm thinking, don't hold me to this, two and a half, two point six million right there. So there's not, see what I was understanding there's, before was there's a million dollars set aside. Well, and when I was saying that, I was saying, I was thinking taking money. I'm not from, arguing, I misunderstood yeah. what I'm saying. It's the same pot of money. Okay. It's exactly. So we only have $2 million that we're talking about. Two and a half. Whatever. <laughs> well, we probably have two and a half in the capital improvement fund that we can do other projects with, but we like to keep a half million in there just in case. Okay. So now I got so my answer this, to the question finally. Answered. So the direction we're getting based on the numbers we have tonight is a gas line of 700, fiber of 100, and lots of 700. And Me, let's, let's have Frank uh, put some, you know, sharpen the pencil and see. So we can come back to council and, and ask for authorization to spend. Blank, 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 to do these improvements of old home equity. We're just talking about infrastructure. Yeah, budget numbers, but not design. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Is is uh, Jerome Junction? Is there going to be water and sewer put down there? There is water and sewer. Going down there is yeah. down. So we develop water. But that's where it ends. Adjacent. That was part of the Are we all in agreement? Might be like We're not going to vote. Raining skittles at is the this moment. Plan to do that, guys. Well, we all can, of you. Well, we th this is bring the numbers and then you bring the numbers. And then we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is one option. Correct with the two million dollars. Uh -huh. Yeah, that wouldn't all be spent. So we have. We also have the. Well, we're going to look at that next. Pay we'll down the debt or road improvement to north, east, to west. We'll just um, to summarize where utilities are now. We've got water running up from Perkinsville to the corner of Rodeo and Jerome Junction. And the sewer that they put in with the EDA grant starts at Gavin Court, where the powder coke place is, right. and runs to Rode just past Rodeo and then down to the lift station. There's, the, there's nothing in that line now, but that was put in with that grant to be served. So we would be cut what they've been talking about is coming off of those lines back into those lots. Mm -hmm. And then there's water, gas, and fiber. And yeah, gas is back at it's three north. north and one east, I yeah. think, somewhere. It's closer to one east, yeah. And, um, but we already had an estimate from the last source. time we yeah, talked about it was 60,000 bucks. Seven hundred thousand. And we think cable one might have fiber to the college, so we would have to do I research and have. find out we where, do. We do where the fiber is. Have. And the gas line, if we do put it in, there is recapture agreements that usually tie along with those. So we build a line in, and anybody who connects on 
So we get some of that, yeah. but not like, you know, subdivision. We have to area. spend it up front. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. We can't wait for questions. Want to go on to the next? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going <laughs> to go down the road improvements. Here. East Road to North and West Road to North. Let's discuss those. Are you skipping the debt? I'm skipping the debt, and we'll go back and talk to you. Okay. Because those are very important. What do you got? Tell me. I'm, I'm going this one? The second one. Yeah. Can you see? Put your glasses on, Jack. I will. Just a minute. Okay, I'm good now. That one? Yep. Yes, sir. We uh, have some prospective developments down there, so we have How come to it's not going? What we do. I did. Well, Jim, go up to the picture. Right? This picture? Yeah. No. Go up to it. Okay. I did. There you go. Several times. Why don't you guys quit hollering at me? I can't stop hollering. <laughs> we love you, Jack. I hate PowerPoints. I don't know anything about them. Okay, Frank, you ready? Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Next. All right, Frank. Three and a half million. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Road 2 North on the east side that was discussed at the Roads and Streets Committee. It was their recommendation that we concentrate on any roads based on traffic and uh, perceived needs. This would be the one to concentrate on would be to, to take that road that line shows from the highway to road one east if you go to the next slide the design um, per the there was a traffic study done recently that looked at all the development in the area and they recommended three lanes um, which is two travel lanes with a turn lane um, and I stole this from Phoenix, a picture of what a three-lane road looks like. You have sidewalk on one side, and on the north side, there's a 2007 transportation study that was done that recommends a multi-use path on one side of two north. It didn't specify which side, but that would connect the Peavine Trail all the way out to Del Rio School on Perkinsville and two north and create a trail system with a line running down one east to catch that the community rec center and the school there. And territorial, not Del Rio. No, we do a no. whole loop all the oh. way from. To get territorial and Del Rio. Okay. Um, so for that portion, that's why it's recommended maybe a shared use trail, which is a big cycle. Um, bike lanes, uh, the current trend is, even if you have sidewalks, to start including bike lanes in the road section. Um, so just design alone, you're talking probably a year to 18 months for design and maybe wrapping some right away in utility design in there. There's the utilities will go on uh, current traffic. We're close to 7,000 cars a day now, probably our busiest road in town. Um, next slide, if you got it. Right away, our code calls for road two north to be 100 foot right away and those two big lines kind of show it see them going through some of the homes of the country west. Um, I don't know that 100 foot's right feasible there. That three lane section I showed you can be done with 80 feet. 100 feet's more of a five lane road. So I probably wouldn't recommend acquiring right away to 100 feet. I would try and get as close to 80 feet as we can and we'd have to look at it. Those orange lines are the actual property lines so you can see where they jog in and out. Even the Safeway Shopping Center is set at about an 80 foot right away. So they're 40 feet off of that red line in the center is a section right away. Okay. So we would have to kind of play with it during design and see what we've got. Um, that's why we put in some money for right away, just in case we need to buy some, um, in case people weren't willing to donate it. Uh, next slide is utilities. We've got plenty of utility issues. The, Big valves are in front of the pet club. I don't know if that's CVID or Prescott Water. Um, you've got an old CVID ditch in front of the church, and of course, all of our lovely power lines. Um, if you want to underground the power through there, it can be done. They're distribution lines. It's just going to cost money to do. So the question is, do you do it? I think it's, in the long run, um, good money spent, but expensive money. 750 is kind of a guess. APA, it might that's, go higher that's than that. That's a low guess. Yeah. Um, 
Chino Valley is, I can't guarantee who was there first. Wouldn't we still have to pay them to move the poles? No, not necessarily. It, you would have to research it to find out who was there first, if we had the right of way first or if the poles were there first. Okay. And it's kind of 50 50 around. Nobody has the right of way. If those poles were in an easement before we had the right of way, they have prior rights and you would have to pay to move them no matter what. Okay. That's, that's a research thing you do through survey research and legal research. Um, and then there's also Storm next. Oh, do you say next? Oh, yeah, we're going to hear next. Um, drainage, you've got bottom right, the post office would need, so we're dealing with federal property there maybe. And right away, that ditch where that person's walking, um, road needs to be widened. Walking in the ditch. Um, top right is still on the, still looking east. We've got all those ditches and all those trees. Those trees need to be cut. Anyway, that's full. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the back the right of the way. ditch is where the that's the back of the ditch is kind of the right away right now. Okay. Um, and this one to the left, I didn't put my arrows on like I wanted to, but that's coming out of Country West. You've got the big pipe, and all those openings in the wall are from detention ponds. And there's also another pipe down in the grass below your cursor right there that you can't hardly see. Right, right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of water that comes out of there is why you need to put all that into the storm drain. And that runs down that ditch on the top right is where all that water goes right now. So your guess is 600,000 just for drainage? Just for drainage, and that's a guess. Um, okay. I'm next year. Yeah, construction is basically just for the street section is a couple million bucks. You can <laughs> see the need for sidewalks here on the left, those paths that people have created just from walking. Um, in the pavement section, we all know in front of Safeway, it's just horrible. Um, that pavement needs to be replaced whether or not you widen it. Um, we're hoping to try and get one north done here in the next couple months so that we can prepare for doing two north next fiscal year. Even if we don't widen it, we want to try and replace the pavement. Um, and I think the next slide maybe totals everything. 3.2 million is the guess right now. That could, you can see where that could easily go up. Yeah, we're trying to start including all the costs. When we talked about it at Roads Committee, we were looking at a couple million dollars, but that was more just construction. When you start looking at utilities and everything, that adds up, and you, you want to be aware of all these numbers. So if we were to wait a couple years, it would get cheaper. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you borrowed money for any project, this would be probably a good one for the return over 20 years. Where are we going now, Frank? Um, Next one. I put one. the other side of two north end with the utility extensions. This one or up top? I can't read anything from here. Maybe right. try the one below it. One below. This one? Yeah. This one? No, no, no. Work. That one? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Good deal. I can't see problem. why are you driving. Beats a snot out of me. <laughs> now, do we want to skip down? That's two Whoops, more. Whoops, look what I just did. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That was. So if we skip down to two north to Del Rio, slide six. This is one that I put in utilities because it's mainly extending utilities. But that red line starts about Walgreens where our fill station is. And I just kind of looked at going all the way out to the back side of the school, which picks up 
that 40 acre parcel to the south as well that they're looking at potentially, who knows, developing. Um, that's much like the other development and you can't bet on it until they actually start throwing money at you. Um, and if we go through, we've got the numbers for it too. Um, you're looking at um, 4.6 is the guess on that with utilities, streets, it would be the same street section, that three lane section. Uh, the fun part for this one, if you look at the return on it, what the, uh, if the apart, this is saying that some of the apartments go through and if the zoning that those 180 acres on the north side are all zoned Fox for Foxness and Heritage Farms. And then that other 40 acre piece. In that 40 acre piece, if they get quarter acre lots there, um, there's a lot of ifs in this, but you could get connection fees somewhere up, anywhere up to $11 million just for the connection fees. Why did we provide any water and sewer? Yes. Well, we, we spend the money, then we return. Yeah, we get return. a return. Yeah, so right? I, I, we've got enough wells now. We need it yeah. to be available so we can. And so that would be up to a thousand residential units. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You can get more accurate with this. But, um, Frank, for <coughs> car usage on this car, number of cars you make? That one's probably in the 4,000 range, if not a little less. So you're thinking a thousand the homes? Thousand. Oh, that's where uh, that traffic study again showed this. No, I meant currently, oh. right now today. Yeah. And at three Four thousand west and seven thousand east. I'd have to verify that. But, but yeah, and kind of thinking that once you get west east of one east, it drops down to about four thousand. Okay. So Frank, on the west side, we have the potential of developers because you have three property owners, pretty much three or four. Yeah big on that side and you can even look so at as they develop then if we need to go ahead and get a loan we know it's kind of money in the bank then to get that one paid back if it develops if it develops so we put that one on hold we're going to the east that one it's already just yeah it's ours yeah you've got more traffic on the east the, the only development we're looking at there is behind Safeway there's a multi-family residential zoning back there, I think. Multi-family mobile home park. No, on the, I do know on the, the going to the east, the amount of foot traffic coming out of the entire uh, Chino. Chino Meadows area. Chino Meadows. I knew the slang and I didn't want to say it, sorry. Uh, you've, um, got, you've got <laughs> Chino Meadows 2, Chino Meadows 5, Chino Bright Actually, basically and one and through five back there. there. Yeah. The foot traffic is, is why roads and streets was more concerned there, just more on a pedestrian mm -hmm. standpoint. Well, that's why I kind of separated these. Especially with the post office being there. Sweet spot. It's, I mean, that, that area is just dangerous. That, yeah, that's a it is. Role. You know, that's a, if, if I picture it in my that's mind, I, it's a big, it's a big uh, place to have bumper cars. I avoided at I all costs. Oh, yeah. so what's going to happen with the so tax that's going to be tax mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so we're going to get in there. Mm -hmm. um, um, the place place is far We'll make it two stories. That building was for sale before it was even built. Three stories. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it was for sale before it was even built. So the one bad news about that traffic study is that the post office slash Safeway driveway there, that's the one thing they said there's just nothing they can think to do there. So yeah. that's always going to be a mm -hmm. failing. Mm -hmm. There's like nine entrances yes. within the 300 yards or so. Yeah, it's dangerous. Without Go closing the back access, way. there's nothing you can do there. But you know what I'd like to see them do there? Switch.
and get a little further away from the information. So would the first step, if we were to look at doing something on the east side, what would our first step be? Um, possibly acquiring right of way and seeing just what we own, what we don't own, would that be the first? I would scope it and get a 15% design concept of it. And then yeah, that would key in what you need to do for right of way to make it. Can I ask you, I have, scoping it means nothing to me, I'm sorry. What's scope mean? Dumb it down a little bit. Develop the scope for the project. Uh, scope of work. Scope of work. Yeah, get okay. your get your designer to bring in the utility Well, guys. yeah, but I didn't understand it the way it came out. Um, yeah, get your utility guys and all your design disciplines together and say, is a three-lane road, where do we want the sidewalks? Where do we want the drainage? And get your drainage guy in there and to work and say, okay, these power poles need to move. And then you get the utilities in there and say what they've got there. And so you understand what's going on. Get you a good foundation. That's your foundation for the design project. So, is a design concept. Do we hire somebody to design person to do that? Yeah, you'd bring in a design consultant to, to start. You could hire them for the whole design, and then they'd start with that fifteen percent more detail. So we know we know this is coming our direction. Yeah. It's coming yeah. our. It's there was a design. Yeah. For example, uh, Kirkland Michael did a design concept for a five lane road all the way out to Brightstar. Back in 08 or 09. And we can't use that? We can probably use part of it. That would be part of what you look at. I don't recommend necessarily a five lane road. No, I agree with you. Um, but that project estimate, I think, was in the 12 to $15 million range. And that was 10 oh. years ago. So that um, was all the way out to Brightstar. That was all the way to Brightstar. Well, frankly. So basically, we have three projects, at four projects, and we we'll really only know the true price of one. So it will be another homework thing for Frank to well, then see the, what that. Bring the consultant. I get a quote from a consultant to bring it in. Yeah. give us a price. So that's what, what I do every day. So, so Frank, to have a consultant give us a price, that costs us money as well. Oh, yes. Right? Mm, to say no. no. So we can go to, say, Fred Wrinklebrink and say, we want to know what this will cost, and he'll just tell us. Or we can put it out for proposals either way. Free is better. They, I think they, 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 they will tell you. The is, yeah, they, they will tell you this is what we will do for this much money. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And then we, but it doesn't cost anything for. The, I didn't know if we had to, to have get a, a price design from before them. they could, no. you know, like you have to have plans drawn before I can bid a job. They'll yeah, let you know what they're going to charge the to do. Doing the yeah. yeah, I tell them three lanes, and they'll give me a quote for design. For design, but not construction. No. no. Right. Okay. So then we still yeah. won't know what it's going to cost. Yeah. Not for construction, <laughs> not without paying someone to do some yeah. of the design. So it will There cost. you go. That's what I want to know. It will cost. So we're going to need to pay somebody to give us an actual cost for the project. For the construction project. For the whole thing, yeah, to be done. So yeah. Frank. Because, you know, I don't want to go chasing after something if I don't know what the end dollars are. I'm sorry, we mm -hmm. got $2 million and we're going to have to kick. Well, I, I guarantee you the cost of this, we're going to have to go out and get some money somewhere else. We don't have that much money. We don't have 4.6. Yeah, but this one's done. However, Frank, we That's are going to have we the adjoining property owners help pay for this, right? On the east side? You can, on the, on the, west, side. On the west side. On the west side, you can set up, the is it an assessment yeah. district? Is that the term? Yeah, we're an improvement district to pay back the west side. So all, as the, the all the apartments go in, mm -hmm. for all those properties along there. That's what we said. Yeah, but the, the same east, thing. The east side, we don't have that option. Right. The east side. Yeah, you got the subdivision. Except for um, impact fees. What about what about the uh, subdivision that's going behind the car wash? I'm sorry if I stepped no, on yeah, you. No, 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 no. What about yeah. the subdivision behind the car wash? That would be for their portion. Yeah, it's not. But still, we're going to get connection fees, right? And sales tax when they build a house, when they build a yeah. But that's not Because that guy you can just back in. Yeah. Yeah. Here, so it's your turn. Um, what's the total cost for all the, the all three of these projects? Four? No. Three. Three? Old Home Manor, Police Department, East and West of Two North. 1.5 and 1. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. What was this one, Frank? 
Mm -mm. No, that's no, not right. Seven. Part, that's thirteen. Three. 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 Nine. That's nine point three. I got. I said nine point two. That's wrong. Okay, you're right. You you were right. Jeez, I rounded Man. down. You rounded up. Which which projects are you best not? Out? So she asked for the total all three. It's, it's one point five for Old Home Manor. Just gas line, fiber, and lots, and then you have three point three five for Road one north or east road two north and four point six two five for west road two north. So there's my difference between what about the two. We're not we're including the police department. That's a whole other ball of wax. No, I want the police department. I want I want all See, the police. Give me a whole number. What was the number? It's like 14. We don't know. 14 right. Yeah, Bob. Okay, so 9.3 Jack's number plus five is about 14. 14. Just win the lotto. Be done with it. <laughs> okay. East side yeah. is east side. Yeah. But most complicated to fix, if I understand correctly. The east side. Right. Okay, let, let's go on to down, pay down the debt. Joe? So essentially, if we. You got a slide for that? For no, I do not. There you go. Oh, 14 million to five. Oh, about 700. So, so if we took out the east side or the west right. side, mm -hmm. that'd be nine. Well, point two. If we do an assessment district, and we know the developers are coming in, and then we can also we can also say that all the sales tax when we start building all the homes and stuff, dedicate that to pay the debt down. We could definitely do the west side, but we're still on the hook. So if hmm? we just do Old Home Manor with the $1.5 million, we're not going to spend it all this budget year. We're probably only going to spend, we'll be lucky if we get the gas line and stuff in. So we have the cash right now, and we're going to continue to have more cash if we put in these. So I would, you know, we're only saving 17000 in interest. But from this budget year forward, then we can just budget one hundred and fifty or 175000 to replace one or two police cars every year couple of utility trucks or whatever and just be on a cash basis from this point forward. So it versus waiting three more years to get this paid off. So just you get five hundred thousand dollars to pay it off. Pay off the loan. And you save seventeen thousand dollars a year in interest. Seventeen thousand total in interest. Oh seventeen thousand total. Yeah. Because we have very low interest. Okay. It's it's real low interest. No, I thought that sounded kinda high, yeah. so that's why I was asking. Yeah. But then we um, but then we, the debt service we're paying now is about 175,000 or 173,000 per year that we're paying on the debt. So next budget year we'd have that cash. Yeah, we'd have so that that's cash. cash and we can pay it and so we'll be able to buy, you know, probably 200,000. How many cars will that buy? Two, three, three, yeah. 50, 55, 57. He's six. Maybe eight. Maybe eight. Plan on sixty thousand dollars for one truck. <laughs> <laughs> Better deal, three cars or one truck. Yeah, but then you but know that's we can just placed property. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying two police Sorry. vehicles, and then one or two other vehicles, a pickup truck, a Ford Escape, mm -hmm. a thing like that, as needed, to, as needed to the admin. Transfer right now, we are yeah. short one admin vehicle. We had something go down, and so we're. On a cheap so who's going to walk? Uh, <laughs> the bicycle. Um, who is the walking? Uh, code enforcement. Walk. Code enforcement is now walking. Uh, so that probably issue. makes people a lot so happy. Yeah. <laughs> we were coming to, we were coming, we were, we haven't talked, but I was thinking of coming to council and asking to be able to buy another Ford Escape with that equipment fund we have with about five hundred thousand dollars into it, just ordering other things. So. What do the mall cops use? 
Oh, the, 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 the segue. Segway. 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 Yeah. Code enforcement. Now, they would not miss anything if they were on a segue. We would do it in range. Be so safe here. <laughs> <laughs> there would be a car. Get one pothole and you get a workman's yeah. <laughs> No, one all raised a dot. One yeah. raised a dot sidewalk. Heaving oh, sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> but it, it gives. I'm, I'm from being dead down. Yeah. It yeah, gives a good position. Yeah, that makes more sense. That one's easy. Yeah. At least that yeah. one we know what's going to cost. That's a no-brainer. And, and it's, and it's one of those that, that hopefully know. we establish something with this council that we pay as we go. Yes. You know, yeah. hopefully that will s yeah. stick for a while. Do you get the direction on that? Pay the cash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. Marbury, okay. you uh, hinted at impact fees. No, I said that's you an said option. It. Okay. Could you expand on that? Um, no. It's a legal option pay for road improvements depending on uh, your zone of impact to north. I've heard that uh, potentially the entire town could be considered an impact zone for two north. Um, that would have to be studied though. I thought impact fees were outlawed three or four years ago. No, there's years. just a lot more rules on them. Yeah, you have to use them. You have to start the project within 10 years of the first year you collect money. There has to be a Defined nexus between the project and the fees collected and various other regulations. And that's you can't why build a school across you town. You just can't collect blank, blanket impact fees and say it's going to parks and then figure out what park you want it to go to. You have to know which park it's going to. So, under $2 million, we can start the old home manor. We can pay the debt off. So, what else is it? And we can actually get some costs for projects. That should not take the two million bucks, huh? Are you interested in the cost for the west side or just the east side? I kind of heard mostly just the east side. I personally would like the west because it seems like the, the least too. complicated. Like well, we as need far the west because that's where development is. Because if we wait, if we wait, if we wait, it's going to get cheaper, right? No. Yeah. That's my whole point. It's just going to get more and more complicated. And I, I happen to. There's two schools there. Yeah. Right. And without yeah. a lot of growth. There's one school the other way. There is one school the other way. With kids it's walking. It's actually, yes, yes. And no sidewalks. But they're, they are preschool and kindergartners who get driven. No. You no need walking. to go down and look in the morning. I do. I drive kids to school all day long. <laughs> <laughs> There's kids walking all over the we place. may possibly be able to get the school, the district for some safety funds. John already left. This statement to me is they're pretty happy on a well not paying any water fees or Of course they are. Mm -hmm. That's not what we want. They also don't have AC, so you know. Mr. Fire out. protection is another thing to think of with hey, water that, rights. That doesn't help us a bit um, on water well. Yeah. Um, no, but it helps them. Yeah. But to them. answer your question, <laughs> utilities <laughs> and right away are pretty consistent on both sides. You want to live in that house okay. Right yeah, we've got some right away in the middle of the road towards the school. Um, but yes. those are on future development property, so they would have to give that right away anyway. I don't think, I don't see how I can make a decision not knowing what the other three projects are going to cost. I agree. That's what we're asking for. So put a little money into giving some of the cost estimates for and have them bring uh, okay. some accurate. The police department and road to north on each side. Yeah. Was there another one? And, and uh, Old Home Manor. Manor. Well, we're, I thought we were just doing the road and the gas and utilities. Say, yeah. What's it going to cost, Mike? Okay, so this will come back at a future study session? No, maybe maybe two months? Well, they were talking about bringing back the old home manor. Yes. Soon. Just some cost so estimates. And that, that really, I don't yeah, think, minimize what support. you're doing. But if we know, you know, that can figure out pretty much what a gas, you know, what the lines yeah. cost per... Feet. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Are we the old, old home manor? Okay, old manor. okay. okay. And, and you know, we know how much a road costs for X amount of feet. So, to come up with budgetary numbers, that shouldn't be too difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, way easier than road two north. <laughs> yeah, I can come up with numbers like like we did on two north. Yeah, okay, just yeah. know that there's budget numbers. So. I'd like to see that come before us soon. So that we can, yeah. So okay. that we can say. Can you get that to us by the next go. council meeting? And then that's yes, only next a week. week. I don't no. know. <laughs> by the council meeting in a month. And then go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, this is the end of the month. This is the end of the month. How about October? I'll call some in here at the next month. <laughs> Can you do that, Frank? But I still think we need a solid number to go by. We can't just say, yeah, we're going to do it. And just like, and I'm not picking on you, Frank, but Frank thought we could do that one for $2 million and come out at 3.2. You know, well, so, that's true. You know what I mean? And again, I'm not picking. No, that's super high right now. I'm not picking at all. I'm just saying. Here that's that's I got other crap I'll pick on you about, but not that one. No. <laughs> Too many slides. <laughs> okay. I'd like our community to help pay for this. Hmm? Well, we get the numbers from them. No, I'd like our community to help oh. pay for this. Um, just like our roads? For all of it. I'm, se I'm serious. And I'm, I identify as a constitutionalist. I'm not a fan of taxes, but why, why are we yeah, not contributing? Why are we Hang on, hang on, Mayor. What is it? Um, a couple things I can maybe even bring back a proposal by the October meeting of what it would take to get a fifteen percent design number for Old Home Manor. Um, and I've already reached out to a consultant on two north to see what it would take to get to that design concept number just and stop the design there not kind of not past that okay. but um so that we'll goes to where what do, what do you look how far are you looking at 15 percent 15 percent design which is a dcr um yeah dcr, well, design, that DCR. design concept put the dates in. um good solid cost estimate Is that our cost per foot, like Glenn was just saying? No, it's more accurate. Okay. In the list of things, did we skip I'll away from that pay option. off at 500000 no, You missed that. You, you missed were asleep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we were asleep. said yes. Okay. I'll bring back either a budget, <laughs> I thought we agreed bring on back that. Okay. budget cost per foot of what I'll I bring think. That to and then I'll also okay. bring the so option if we want to hire more. someone to get more accurate numbers. It's easy. Generally stifles growth. Okay. So if we underwent a uh, study for impact fees, it's what, nine million? Or maybe you know that, Josh. Yeah, it's a fifty to seventy-five thousand dollar number the last time we looked at it, and I think it's about an eighteen month process to go through because you gotta it has and Josh you can help me, it has to be Incorporated with the master plan and general, general, plan. General, general plan, a couple of the planning documents, it all has to link together. So it's a process to go through. And then for the smaller communities, the problem is it has to have the nexus to a specific project. So if you're going to, like the next phase of Bright Star, if we're going to do impact fees, we have to be able to show that the impact fees that that development is paying is going to pay for stuff that that development impacts. Right. And so Frank, you know, with the attorney, they think, well, Two North is a perfect place because everybody goes to Two North, so we, we can get that nexus we want to. But it's Indeed. probably at least an 18, realistically, a 24-month process with all the public hearings and everything you have to do to get well, to it. 64 square miles. I mean, they're going to look at everything that could be developed and where yeah. it impacts it. So, and you know, if we did it and said we just want a road impact fee to help us with our roads, I mean, it's it's doable, but it's a fifty, it's at least fifty to seventy five thousand to have a firm come in and do that for us. So years ago, we did away with them because of the legislation, and we've never had direction from council to go back there just because of some of the barriers, I guess. Part of Mont, or sorry, Forty. But I know Prescott. No, no, we're not done. Are you leaving? I don't know. He's Go always ahead. first in court. <laughs> <laughs> One more page. Road extensions. One quick page. Let's go to road extensions. 
So is that something that we could talk about, or is that one of want to Well, we could put that on the council agenda. You guys could talk about it and decide if you want to. I know you're in there. I see it. I see it. Feel it. How long no, is we need to educate more than Bring it back. Five? Two, yeah. Okay, let's go I, on. I, I would like to know more yeah. what the options um, is. Was this you, Frank? I think we need to finish off with Annie's asking and see if the council oh, just wants you. to bring it forward to study. Impact that. fees? Is that something? Bring that it that back for explanation. Is. No. A little thorough. No. No. Do you guys have an opinion? Not me. Well, I don't have these. I think it's something to discuss more in a session like we've got right now and get some more facts on it before we take it. Well, that's what I'm saying, that we would have a discussion about it. If you're interested, we would have a discussion. Yeah. So we want to do that in a study session? Yeah, yeah I, okay. the thing is, I don't want it, you know, and I'm going to use this as an example because I really felt bad for Maggie. But I felt like the whole deal that she stood up and talked to us about the signs really was not fair because we brought something to a council meeting to try to get approved that no one had talked about. And so then we end up in that conversation that we were at in there, and then we allow the paper to print what they did and pit our staff against the council, and we just open ourselves up. You already saw the paper? Yes, I did. I read it at lunch today at Gabby's. <laughs> and so, you know, I was kind of the, that, that joker that writes the, you know, he doesn't have anything else to do, so <laughs> Stir the he crap. plays on Chino. So, King. Jason? Yeah, you know, let's not do that to Jason. ourselves. Oh, Jason. Okay, impact fees, the next study session? No, not the next one. Let us do, because we'll have to do a little research and stuff. I stand and we already have a handful. Whenever the hell you're them. ready, bring the impact fee. <laughs> <laughs> we will get it scheduled. This we'll is get recorded, it. and that's awesome. <laughs> That'd be four half your retirement. <laughs> okay. Let's go on to the next item. I heard from Rob. Consideration and discussion regarding a proposal for possible utility extension in various sections of town. Mr. Marbury. Okay. Uh, now remember, this is a separate source of funding, so we want to make sure that we are clear on that instead of talking it's about It's not out of the $2 million. Correct. No, it's no, got some water and sewer enterprise. Is this? The enterprise fund. Enterprise fund. And that's why we had it on a separate sheet. Somebody wrote all over my papers. So we looked at kind of with the subject of extensions to some of the um, lot split areas that we're getting at and bringing that forward. Wanted to try and bring you a cohesive look at what's going on. And we looked at all the areas that kind of fit within the areas that are served by our utilities, where we have lines in the ground that are zoned SR1 um, that have potential for splits going on. Um, so. The East Perkinsville is the one that came before council to the call to the public. Um, that number up there is from a contractor that I can bring to council if council desires. I will say. Is East Perkinsville, I'm sorry, sir, is that the Anthony Lane one? Oh, that's the one d across from Anthony Lane. The Roberts property? Yeah, Rotaring and Roberts. Yes, and, uh, okay, Aldi thank you. And, thank you. Yeah, it's on the page there, it's the two dash lines. Um, the blue and the green. This is a pro for space. those two guys that came in and talked to us. Right. Yes. Um, One of them's right here. <coughs> yeah, it's the big solid That guy. Line. This guy. Right <laughs> Patiently waiting. Mm -hmm. Patiently the, waiting. the big solid green line on the right is our trunk main, and the two dash lines coming off of Perkinsville are the proposed lines there, about 1,100 feet each. Let me find the air. Oh, sorry, buddy. Right here, right? Right there. That's the East Perkinsville. Um, Can I ask a question before we go on? But what's the gap in between those two lines and these two lines? One's water, one's sewer. The gap? Yes, sir. They're just dashed to show proposed. Got it. Solid. Understand. Um, there. Um, with the exception of the next one. But um, again, that East Perkinsville one, that number's from a contractor. Um, I will say that our engineer estimate, we were estimating somewhere between 260 and 320. Um, so you can do the math. That one quite high. Um, so. Was that price gotten on a, on a RFQ or? 
That's the JLC like we did for the streets, but remember your question about do we do price comparisons? That's close to double what I was expecting based off price comparisons. So I'm not sure in good conscience I can recommend approving that. Um, what do you mean? You need another bid? Is that what you're saying? <coughs> yeah. They're kind of looking for direction on that maybe. Is that... The, what you need is another I could bid. get other... I could uh, break off negotiations with this firm and, and get another bid, but I don't know if the availability is there to get the work done as quick. Um, What's the time frame to get the quote and all that information? Um, well, this one, they I think they could be done in four to six weeks with construction, but the other firm that I could go to on another GOC, <coughs> they're tied up at least for the next month. I'm, I'm just talking about getting the number frame. The time oh, frame to get a number. I can't legally, I don't think I can start negotiating on one without breaking off negotiations from the Oh. So break off. You can't price shop like that. But well, you can go out for a full bid. Yeah, we, we can do then, some more. Um, we've got design for the plans. We could go back and do specifications. And then you're looking at probably a three month process to. Shit. Yeah, okay. it's public procurement. You've got to advertise for four weeks, um, open bids. Um, yeah, it's going to take us okay. a few weeks to get it together. Then you advertise for four weeks and you open bids, and then you have to go to the council meeting, and then you yeah. get a so, construction so meeting. Mayor, I'm, I'm not exactly clear where we're going on this. Are we going to discuss this, this road in particular? And how this whole one, this whole issue is playing this, out? This is, is that an issue that is that open? Need, uh, yes, I mm -hmm. think so. We need to deal with it. It's an issue that's on the table. So one of the things we talked about was bringing it back to council for next week. They would say do nothing, <coughs> let the let the homeowners just move forward because the costs appear to be too high, or go out for more competitive bidding, or whatever. But we want to get off the dime and let somebody move forward. Or Give them an answer. What's okay. your timeline? Well, My timeline? I, yes. Well, I'm ready to drill a well today. I mean, I'm waiting on you guys. That's right. He's not um, not even the worst one. We've got on Smith Court, which is a future slide, I've got four homes that are currently under construction. Ugh. I'm sorry. That's yeah, it's same, same contractor? No, there are two homes or one contractor, and I think. No, no. water and sewer. Same contractor? Yeah. Same high price? That one came in at triple my estimate. You sound me. like you're on the wrong course. If you go down, down two more slides, it's that one. Mm -hmm. um, Smith Court, uh, we were in both our engineer, the Lion did the design on it, and Lion and I were both in the same ballpark of about 50,000 that we thought came in at 159. But if we stop and start over, we're pushing everybody back six months. Yeah, and that one's got four houses currently. Or 90 days. That's Pretty not much dried in. Or, or they're allowed to go sewer and water. Or sewer and water. Yeah. Septic and water. Septic, Septic. Septic. yeah. They're, they're kind of waiting on, on me right now to tell them which way to go. I thought our objective was to do sewer and water as much as we could. Mm -hmm. we'll yeah. Say. Well. Because that's the thing you're looking at. Safe yield. Yes. Use of the plant, recharge. Yep. Um, there's things to weigh as far as what you're looking at. Well, both of them are, the Smith Court and this one are both ones that are near sewer water. One acre parcels. I'm just, I'm, I'm all for getting our sewer and our water laid out and, and you know, the, re, the whole recharge thing is the biggest thing to me. Charge is, is an awesome thing to be able to send to the sewer treatment plant, whether they have a well or if they're on city water or town water. But if we're not ready, it's not fair for us to hold people up. Agree. Agree. So, Agree. What if know, we just did sewer and not water? Would that cut all these in half? You cut that one in half, Smith Court's still 160 or 500. But, but still, as a developer, or, and again, I, I'm. Yeah. I have a real issue in this whole context of this, and I guess what is the de definition of a developer? 
Somebody that splits their property into three pieces is not a developer. They don't fall under the real estate guidelines. It's if you develop, if you split more than three, from my understanding, then you become a developer. And then you check, that's when you, three to three to three, or then have to go by development standards. Well, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to split more than three times. Well, that, that's if, it. You know, if you're a developer, I think, <coughs> Then you're taking a 50-acre, 20-acre parcel of land and say, I'm going to develop this and I'm going to become a subdivision. Now you're under a whole different set of rules. And I think three three is that breaking point. Three what? Three splits. So well, three splits is everything that anybody, whether you have a 20-acre parcel or a three-acre parcel, three is the maximum. Three is the maximum. So to now start trying to hold these people's feet to the fire, and start calling them developers and having them hold by different standards, you know, we're, I thought we realized some time ago, we're kind of screwed on some of these people that are doing this stuff. Yep. We know what they're doing, but we don't have any way to combat, you know, to fight against it, short of possibly requiring individual property um, engineering. but. This Every one of these on, on that one on Perkinsville yeah. was three, three, and three. Um, so I don't know where we we got off on holding these people up this way. Um, well, and, and I understand that, well, the first guy, well, he went back, so he needed to go this far. Well, once he, once he didn't bring it this far, the rest didn't matter. That was the two pages I read last week they got from the legal counsel. Yeah, if we were ready, if we were ready to supply those lines and had them there to hook up to, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, if we're, if we're three months out or six months out or whatever it is, what do you do? You know, you tell the people, well, yeah, you're just going to have to hang out. You, know, you're, you can finish your house, but you can't move in because we don't have water over there yet. And, you know, I don't know what we did. And we don't know when someone's going to come in and, and all of a sudden do just like that one started yeah, out. Bam, and bam, bam. Whatever it did, whatever it started out at. It um, or less. And it, it, because it just went like that. And yeah, but we went from we one property to potentially 15. You know. If we don't set some kind of guidelines or some rules, we'll always have this situation. I see and it, You're I right. See but really what I'm saying is those guidelines are not in place right now. We can't create it after the fact. I, I, I agree with we're too late on these. Um, but I also think we need to do a study session or something and get down and figure out what we got to do, like Lon said and what Corey said, for the future. If you've, well, got, fif if you've got 1,500 density. if you've got 1500 acres and it's within 400 feet of the water line, I think that whole 1,500 acres is subjected to water and sewer. And go no matter how much you split it up. Can we go two more slides? The bottom right is Smith Court. The green. The dash line, yes. that's just nine lots. But go up and look at those two dash lines there. Wow. See where that, that's 36 acres zoned SR1. See that one on the left is already split three. Mm -hmm. They're coming in wanting more splits. What do we do? Thirty-six wells and septic. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying we can't. So like we can't make a judge do? a judgment on these guys based off of these guys. You know what I mean? If these guys are in the same court and we're holding them up, then what's the cutoff place? Yeah. I mean, we need to expand our sewer. Okay. Yeah. So and <clears throat> I still haven't gotten a good a definition of the the whole legal. All I've gotten is I've asked our attorney is is all are we doing this the right way and he said yes, but well, that's all. I put one in your boxes and I emailed it to you. What his response was, and then that's what Frank read. Okay, that it's it's not a subdivision, but when it comes to utilities and <laughs> development of. It's set, our code reads even similar to a subdivision. Um, 
then you have this authority, um, even for single lot development, maybe. Um, Similar such development. To do it. Okay. So, <coughs> so, with that being said, can we take and tell these people that are trying to split these lots right now, look, we're in the process of getting water and sewer, and this is how we're doing it, this is why we're doing it, <coughs> and we're doing it by this authority, and we're not going to do any more lot splits until we have this stuff ready for you. That might be a Josh. I like that idea. Uh, you know, that might be hard to hold them up without some sort of moratorium placed on it. They have the zoning. You can't really restrict them. The, the issue, though, is you know, the definition of public way in our code allows for an easement to be considered a street, whereas in the state statutes, if we got rid of public way and you require an actual street to be constructed, then the definition drops from four lots to two. Even one split, yeah. Even a one split would require a road in which we could require it to be paved and utilities put in. So the, the real crux of the issue is the definition in our code, public way, is kind of causing a lot of these issues. Um, and we need to change the code, right? I have a hypothetical. I always have hypotheticals. Hypothetically speaking, we pull the trigger and we move forward. With the exception of the properties that are already being developed. And from that point forward, when we have the sewer and water in, cut it off and say no more, and then they have to connect. Is that a viable option? I know we want to do it right now, but is that a viable option to keep these, not keep these people right. held up? Well, if I understand, that's exactly what Josh is saying, though. That's what we need to change, then, is our wording so that then we have some authority on can, a street where we don't on a right-of-way. Right. So in the zoning ordinance, the UDO right now, lots are required to have a certain amount of frontage based on the, uh, the zone that they're in. SR1, you're required to have 100 feet of frontage on, on a right-of-way. But... Several years ago, the definition of public way was put in to kind of get around that street requirement. So when that when those three splits went in, they would require, because those back two lots don't have frontage on a right-of-way, they had to put in this 50-foot easement uh, to, to serve them. We don't have the, uh, the right or the authority to require them to pay that see that around the town. So the code needs to be changed. It needs to be updated to address this issue. Um, How long will it take you to change the code? <laughs> it needs to be changed? Uh, yes. Change yes. it. Um, we can bring it to council. Actually, uh, this coming following process. Wednesday, we were having a UDO subcommittee meeting to get direction on the uh, subdivision regulations, which would be the good starting point change that. And how long is it going to take to bring it to council? I, if you want it, I can, I can bring you language Thursday. within a couple months. Three months. It'd have to go to PNC first, right? It, it would have to go through PNC for the language. So it's, uh, for it should to go to PNC the first next month of October. I can't do that. <coughs> you can't. That, you're asking you're quite a bit. The UDO next week. Yes. Next week, the UDO? Yeah, yeah, the UDO yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the reason I can't take it to PNC next October is number one, I don't have the language written, but number two, today was the deadline for notification. Yeah, uh, we have to do notification. Yeah, public hearing is part of the Okay. Two. They're pretty big ramifications, too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so. This might not be a quickie thing. Yeah. So, that, so what do we do with the current folks that we're holding up now? Let them yeah. go. The town has survived the way it's been for how many hundred years. So, but. Do we go yeah, and we start the process. And just to address that a little bit, one of the reasons we haven't seen this is most of the lot splits have been out west where we don't have anything, and there hasn't been much development in the past 10 years because of the economy. So that, that may be why we're seeing some of these, what we think are unusual So what do we do with the, these properties? Um, that's Back to my question. the direction I'm looking for. My suggestion is the ones that already have the houses on, which is the three on the bottom right. Smith Court. Yeah. 
And, and what's the one on the left at the top? Those haven't done anything but split yet. That's Perkinsville 38. So they're, they're not held up. Or, no. Perkinsville so we 38. could technically do that sewer line. Or require them to, yeah, either way. However it works out. Yeah. And then the one that wants to split. Is that correct? I know. And, and well, so you just said we can't, you said require them to do it? Well, depending on the, when, when you have, the way the code reads, if there's an extension, technically the property owner is responsible for the extension. But where you get in the rub is when these things split, you're dealing with multiple owners. Yeah, and, and that's where we need to work, because that one lot, once it's that close, no matter how many times they split it, they all ought to be required, in we, my opinion. We know we're going to get development. We know we're going to get lots so of So that's why I was change recommending the language to the public right of way Just with that address. The definition is public way. Public way. Public way. Right. It, public it, it that would make the these be subdivisions, is what that would do. But if that was changed in the next couple months to that address, this issue would be pressed with. Any future splits, those would be subdivisions. So the ones now could proceed with their build, and the future ones. Mr. Would Mayor, be. so we got two that are held up: Perkinsville and whatever Net the road Net is there. Net Court. Net Court. So right. we let those guys do water or do their own well and septic, and these other two we require them to get, come after we get our stuff group in the poop. Okay, then we've got, if we go back to... Just roll the roller. Gosh, I got teacher every day. The next dash line over there is Salida del Sol, Bradshaw, and James Drive. Um, this one, right up, yep. You've got about, the Bradshaw one is the one that just <coughs> had 20 acres that is split into 15 lots or so. Uh, um, already. I'm moving. Three of them are already built. I think we've got a couple permits in. That's the, so if we, to do there, what do we do with that one? I say relate to the dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. just, just want to be fair and mention this one too. So. But we need to fix it so in the future it doesn't happen no more. Yeah, because so that's the big push we're we've been seeing for a year and a half. With the verbiage at least. changing it to streets, correct? That will fix it for the future. It basically will eliminate lot splits yeah. unless they have frontage on the road. Can I'm we okay legally eliminate lot splits from state law? That is state law. No, they'd be that allowed to state do law lot to splits, eliminate them? They, no, just, no, that, that they, they, they would still be allowed to do lot splits, but they would be required to have the 100 feet, feet of frontage required for gotcha. each individual lot. Gotcha. Okay. And they'd be required to build the road. Build the road. Yeah, would have frontage. Yep. So it'd be good. Right be good. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> but these guys that are held up now should not be paying for. No, I agree. I agree too. Do we I need agree. to bring that to council next? I don't know. Do we even, maybe we'll take it for a formal vote so we can just mix it. Because you know, it's been out there kind of hanging. But if maybe you don't want they, it as a town. These project, ones here? I don't know. That I don't think that this, hold it's these not even a. If we're not going to do that okay. project. Unless you think it needs some sort of form of yeah. So now we can roll this money over into the police department. Yeah, as far as the is is <laughs> enterprise funds. <laughs> do you have, do you have your can, guidance? Can, Pardon me? What's build. the guidance now for the comms? Are you asking me to summarize what you just said? Yeah. Please stop. Um, <laughs> go ahead and let Smith Court <laughs> Shut and, <up>. Smith Court <laughs> and uh, the Perkinsville um, on the east side move forward with whatever their plans are for development. And uh, Josh will start working on language for public way with uh, Frank and bring it through the processes to bring that in front of council so we can address some of As soon as possible. I, I was thinking of the word expeditiously. Is that a word? Is that a word? Expeditiously? With the addition of any of the Bradshaw ones, we will switch those. Remember, you're in government. I'm not in government. Those are the guidelines. Everybody agree? He's free to do Jack? Sir. To see us. Okay. You clear? Clear? Free to do your drilling. Thank you, sirs. That's clear for me. Get out of here. Thanks for your patience. And I think I can reduce my blood pressure medicine. Okay. Anything else? I think that's fair for everybody. Any other right? comments, like questions? We just did something really good. I make a motion to adjourn. I, I second it. I. Good day. Thanks. 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 Thanks.